Hey everyone, welcome back to our third episode in our Asphalt Shingle mini series. Today we're going to be looking into ice and water shield. So ice and water shield, what is it? Why do you need it? What kind of different ice and water shields do we have? Um, so let's uh, dive into a couple of our options here. All right, so our ice water shield here, you see is a 36 inch certainty winter guard, granulated surface, so add some traction um, for when you're walking on it. It also comes in a sanded surface, which I don't have here, but um, we also have a high temp or a metal version. So here's a roll of our 36 inch granular comes in a 65 length roll covering approximately 195 square feet next we have our winter guard metal the smooth surface great for under metal roofs um, still provides a little bit of grip for some traction so this is a li little taller than your standard winter guard um, a little shorter as well, but same general coverage. So around two squares, 200 square feet of coverage there, or I believe 61 feet of lineal coverage. I may be wrong on that. Someone can fact check me, but this great for under metal, um, or if you're doing work around skylights and such, a lot of manufacturers require a smooth self-adhered ice and water shield. So you can use this under metal, under skylights, etc. Next, our third, we have a certainteed high temp or high tack. So again, smooth surface. So you could use this around skylights as well. Split back release. So this is great for any roofs that get extremely hot. So tiles, uh, metal, metal shingles. You want to install a high temp, high tack. Uh, ice water shield underneath it has a smooth surface so it won't damage your metal panels from underneath. So again, just want to bring up the fact I'm not sponsored or affiliated with CertainTeed. I just have a bunch of CertainTeed materials here because that's why I like to teach my apprentices. Um, nor do I work for CertainTeed. It's personal preference. There's a lot of great products out there. Um, a lot of great ice and water shields. So um, personal preference. Whatever works for you works. Ice and water shield. These come in 36. The metal, a little bit wider. You can also get 44s. Um, so this changes region by region, but where we are, we require ice and water shield at the eaves, the valleys, sidewalls, any penetrations. We had a lot of snow here, a uh, big freeze thaw cycle in the winter, especially in the spring when everything starts to melt. Um, we get a ton of ice damming. Um, that's why we require, we require ice and water shield. So what ice and water shield does sticks to your decking, provides a layer of protection against ice dam leaking. It does not prevent ice damming, but it pr protects against the cause of leaks due to ice dams. So what it does seals to the decking. When you go nail your shingles through it, it then creates a seal around your shingles or around your nails, pardon me, and won't leak through. So code here required, you need to have ice and water shield extend 12 inches past the interior finished wall. So that's required by code here, National Building Code of Canada. You require it 12 inches within or 12 inches past the interior wall. So if you have, let's say, a six inch overhang, a six inch wall, that's 12 inches, 12 inches past that, 24 inches. But because these rolls come in 36 and minimum requirement is 36, we're installing a 36 inch roll. So it doesn't matter, no soft or anything like that, 36 is the minimum. Now, if we go a little larger, um, you may need to extend this past. Now, this is 
in the code book, but not a requirement, but it is recommended that if you do live in a heavy snow um, area, that you extend that past the 12 inches and make it 24 instead. Now it's only a recommendation, not required, but good to have that extra protection. Now, ice water shield, you need it on all heated, insulated roofs, attic spaces. Um, if you have an uninsulated, unheated garage, you technically don't need ice water shield. If you have an overhang that extends 36 inches, ice water shield isn't going to do you much good here. You're going to have to bump that up. Um, and that's about it for ice and water shield. So let's install a little piece. Like I said, it's a split back release. We're going to install a piece generally on a hot summer day. It'll stick to the decking pretty easily. I may have to tack it in here with a couple nails, um, but I'll just kind of put on a little demo piece here. All right, here we have our piece with our split back release. So it's split down the middle for ease of installation. So what you want to do, if you're going over top of your drip edge, you want to bring that flush to the edge of your drip edge. If you're going underneath, remember, you want to overlap that onto your fascia or further down, depending on what your fascia is being covered with. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to line it up. And be very careful on a hot summer day. This stuff will stick really easily and you won't be able to pry it, especially on itself or onto something else. But here, since it's not too warm in here, it won't be too bad. I may, like I said, have to tack it in with a nail. So you peel those back. There we have it. I'm just going to tack it in for good measure. So on each corner. And I'm going to trim any excess that I see on the side here. There you have it. Now we got our drip edge, we have our ice and water shield installed. Stay tuned for our next episode, we're going to dive into some starter shingles. Thanks.